The short wheelbase Jeep Wrangler Rubicon is back in Australia and it's only for a short time. This is arguably the most iconic and you could say pure take on Jeep's off-road vehicle. Being a Rubicon, it's got all that awesome off-road hardware that we love. It's only got two doors and it's got even less room inside than a normal Wrangler, which let's be honest, is a bit pokey already. But this promises to be better off-road. Shorter wheelbase, better turning circle, better clearances overall as well. We're out in the bush to drive some tracks and see how this thing goes. Let's get into it. There are 100 special edition Wrangler Rubicons coming to Australia in this unique recon trim. 60 of them will be long wheelbase unlimited, while 40 will be like this one. And with only 2,459 millimeters of wheelbase, that's 96.8 inches in the old money, this is a true short wheelbase four wheel drive. And that makes for good off-road clearance. There is a 42 degree approach angle, 27 degree ramp over and 31 degree departure angle. And the turning circle is also tight for an off-roader, 10.5 meters. If you want a four-door Rubicon Recon, it's going to cost you $71,450, but the one that we have on test here is $66,950. And it's effectively $6,000 more over a standard Wrangler Rubicon. So what do you get for that high asking price? There are a few differences in this compared to a normal Rubicon. Firstly, there's a few aesthetic things. We've got a black grill on here, changes the look of the car quite a bit. But more importantly, in my opinion, you get a steel front bumper. That's better for clearance and protection. We've got some red recovery hooks here on the top. Just pop that off. A hoop there as well. And also these side wings, which are removable if you're keen on a little bit of extra clearance. I'll just move around to the side here. These are a 32 inch BF Goodrich mud terrain tire, a very good off-road tire. However, it's worth noting that in America, they get a larger diameter tire and the newer KM3 style. It would be nice if we got that in Australia also. One of the great things about this Rubicon is protection. Good steel rock sliders here. There are bash plates underneath also. And compared to say the Gladiator Rubicon, we don't have as much protection here at the back. However, the departure angle is awesome. And of course, there are things that you can't see about this Rubicon that makes it great off-road. There's a four to one transfer case in there. That's great for low speed crawling. We've got front and rear diff locks as well, and a front sway bar disconnect for stable articulation on rough tracks. That transfer case coupled with 4.1 gears and the heavy duty differentials means this Wrangler Rubicon gets a wonderfully low 77 to one crawl ratio. It's unsurprising, but the Jeep feels right at home on off-road tracks. Coil sprung live axles with plenty of travel available might yield a bit of rock and roll on the road, but off-road it's sure-footed and stable. And when you've got plenty of clearance and protection on offer, you feel confident from behind the wheel when you're lining up against challenging obstacles off-road. The powertrain is standard fare amongst all Wranglers. That's a 3.6 litre petrol V6, which makes 209 kilowatts and 347 Newton meters. That runs through an eight speed automatic transmission and part-time four wheel drive. And while Australia is a market that loves diesel four wheel drives, this engine does work well for an off-roader like the Wrangler. Let me just show you the back of this Wrangler. There's not a lot of space going on here. It's a two-piece tailgate like this. One thing we've noticed with this test car is that the gas struts aren't doing terribly well. They drop down and we've banged our head into that a few times. The camera guys have not appreciated it. Another thing, when it's raining, when it's closed like this, water does trickle down here and then actually cascades into the back. You get a wet boot, you can get wet gear as well. But let's have a look at the space here. You can seat four people into this Wrangler, but not much else. When that second row is stowed away, it still takes up a fair bit of your cargo room. So this probably isn't the perfect car for the big long family getaway when space is at a premium. The Wrangler might be an old school four wheel drive mechanically, but it's got a lot of tech going on inside. We've got a big crisp infotainment display here. We've got Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, navigation, digital radio. There's also this thing called off-road pages. You can go in here and there are a lot of different details around your angle, off-road stuff, transmission temperatures, all sorts of things. It's quite good. 
Moving further down here, you'll find your window buttons. They're there because the doors actually come off. So it's one less thing to worry about when you're removing all the electricals and that sort of thing. The roof does come off as well on this Wrangler, like all other ones. Now in front of you here, you've got a Speedo and a Taco, but you've also got a multifunction display that runs through a lot of extra information. When you're off-road, my favorite thing is tire pressure monitoring. It does come up here. You can keep an eye on what's going on. And if you left your pressure gauge at home, like we did today, you can see what exactly is going on with your tires. In terms of power outlets and that sort of thing, we've got one USB point here and a USB-C point. There's an auxiliary input for audio and a 12 volt plug. Here we've got heated leather seats and a heated steering wheel also. These seats are comfortable. There is manual adjustment, however, but they're good enough. The center console is quite big. You've got two cup holders here and a slot for your keys or your phone. It all works quite well from a practicality point of view. And for people who are going to modify Wranglers, and let's be honest, most people do, we've got four auxiliary switches here already pre-wired and you can mount those up to any accessories you fit to this car. Air compressors, lights, whatever it is, camping gear, it's all ready to go there. Moving across here, you've got your sway bar button as well. That controls your electronic front sway bar disconnect front and rear locking differentials and a low range transfer case lever. All this stuff is going to come in handy because we've got a bit of a challenge here to take on and it's just started raining so it's going to be even more of a challenge. To truly test out this Wrangler, we lined it up against a well-known track called Ranger Bobs. It's normally a track only attempted by modified four-wheel drives, especially on this hard line we're taking with the big sandstone steps and side angles to negotiate. The first challenge is well known, but further up, if we do make it that far, we will need to be creative in order to get through some ruts, around a corner, and keep the car in one piece. But I'm hoping with low gearing in this car, the four to one transfer case, the diffs locked, the sway bar disconnected, all the party tricks this Jeep has, hopefully I can crawl nice and slowly with real control up this challenge. Hope I can get up. All right, first rut to drop into here. Get to know where the car is. It's not going to bottom out there. No, nah, we're good. We're climbing. Just love the low speed control you get with this car. It's, it's fantastic. Here is that main challenge. You've got to kind of hit it straight on a little bit. All right, so we've gotten up to the front of it there. Approach angle on this car is really good. Just to see if we can slowly crawl it up. Departure angles being tested there. Not bottoming out. Jesus, it's steep. Far out. That was impressive. Barely slipped at all. The tyres are at 15 psi roughly all around. Just crawled up. Not a drama at all, this is, there we go, just slow wheel speed, gentle throttle. You can feel the tires gripping into the earth. And because you've got a bit of protection around the place, you're not second guessing yourself. You know that you can scrape a little bit, slide a little bit, and there's no dramas. This is gonna be a bit tricky though. Side angles on hills, never feel bottomed out there, I think. Let's see if that'll pop up. Come on. Yep, beautiful. God, got some steep angles here. This is crazy. You can just see Sal's hand. Nah, nah. The Jeep Gladiator does have a camera on the front of the car, which does help in situations like this. All I can see are trees, pretty much, and a bit of sky. The reversing camera, you can see here, is actually quite good, but at the moment it's covered in mud, so it's not much help. All right, climb this side here. Feel the tires grip. No, is that going to yep, come? Yeah, keep on? coming on that. Keep coming. Keep coming. Yeah. There it goes. Just come the other way. Oh, keep. This way. This left. Left. Oh. Keep coming. All right. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Far out. All right. Whoa, that was hectic. Join us to give it like the slightest bump and then just see if I can get past and hit the brakes. Or is it too risky? Yeah, it's a bit risky just with this drop on the other side here. Righto. Just running out of clearance a little bit there. Same as last time, just kind of start steering up the bank a bit. Now start turning in, yep. Keep coming on that. 
Yep, now start turning that way. Yep, more, more, full lock. Full lock, oh, keep coming, keep coming, just slowly, slowly, slowly. Yep, clear, keep coming. Ah, uh, just back to Max Rack down. Yeah. <laughs> The beauty of this car is that you can attempt this stuff nice and slow with lots of control because of the gearing. It's all down to the gearing. It makes such a big difference when you're trying to do tiny little changes to your line. Because sometimes it's just millimeters that is the difference between driving something and not driving something. The challenges kept coming and this deep rut had us at an awkward angle. We had to turn through it and point ourselves back up towards the hill and we couldn't carry too much speed because it was just too risky. I don't know who Ranger Bob is exactly, but I feel like he would be proud. Yeah. Nice. That was really impressive. The short wheelbase, the nimbleness of this car lets it crawl around some pretty tricky stuff. That first big challenge, this Jeep did it so easily. And with a bit of track building, you didn't see it on all the camera work, but old mate Sal did a pretty good job there to get this car up. But props to the Jeep because this thing is super capable. Well, the rain's starting to come in here in the bush, but it's all right because we're all finished with this Jeep Wrangler. And I have to say, short wheelbase Rubicon has really delivered off-road. This is a great fun car to drive. And it's also, because it's so capable, easy to drive in technical terrain. It's kind of like a cheap form of motorsport, I think. Yes, it costs $70,000, but this has a lot of all the right ingredients straight off the bat. So you can come out here and test yourself as a driver and test the car in some pretty tricky terrain. We always knew a short wheelbase Rubicon would be great off-road. It kind of goes without saying, but I think today we've proved it. Let us know in the comments below, is this the most capable off-roader in standard form in Australia, or would you choose something else? And give us a like for making it up Ranger Bobs. I feel like we did a pretty good job. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel on YouTube. And if you want to see more off-roading action, check out our Land Rover Defender off-road review. We really put that thing through its paces on some hard tracks as well.